أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم dear students I welcome you all once again to another session of online video lecture series uh, for the subject of Afghanistan economy this is our fourth lecture inshallah in today's lecture we'll have discussion on the monetary policy in general and then specifically we'll have discussion on the monetary policy of Afghanistan so let's see what do we have for our today's lecture inshallah we'll have discussion on the monetary policy monetary policy of Afghanistan core functions of the monetary policy and monetary policy instruments by used by the central bank of Afghanistan the Afghanistan bank and then there'll be some discussion on extra concepts like reserve requirements open market operations discount rate quantitative easing and bubble burst so let's begin with the monetary policy the definition and the meaning of the monetary policy monetary policy if you look at the name you can at least get the meaning from that monetary policy monetary is taken from the word money and you know what policy means so it looks like there is something about the management of the money so in simple words we can say a policy of a policy by a government or from the government side uh, with regards to the management of the money and money specifically here means the national currency the national currency or the banknotes so a policy for the management of the money supply or the national currency supply uh, within the boundaries of a country uh, so that policy is called monetary policy that that's the like you can say in, in, in so simple words it's not like a, a bookish definition or bookish explanation this is we can say a layman explanation uh, explanation taken from the title or from the from the words itself when it comes to the definition of monetary policy we can say monetary policy is a government policy <coughs> made usually by the central banks for the expansion or the contraction of money supply expansion or contraction of money supply so let's uh, discuss this definition word by word I mean divided into different parts so you can easily get the meaning of what monetary policy is expansion of money supply and contraction of money supply before we talk about the expansion and contraction let's discuss what money supply means here money supply is basically the issuance of bank notes or the national currency to the to the market for circulation that's called money supply right and central bank every country has a central bank uh, which is called the bank of the banks uh, which is responsible for making monetary policy for publishing uh, currencies in, in banknotes in Afghanistan the central bank is called the the Afghanistan bank so the Afghanistan bank here in Afghanistan is uh, responsible for make for preparing an uh, implementation of the monetary policy now let's talk about the expansion or contraction expansion of money supply means when central bank uh, injects national currency or money to the market for circulation when they issue right the money to the market that's called expansion of money supply contraction of money supply when the central bank by doing different activities which we will discuss uh, later on 
collects back the money from the market by doing different operations that is called contraction of money supply or when monetary policy stops uh, issuing the bank notes to the market that's called contraction of the monetary policy the central bank's main job in a country is legalizing monetary policy preparing monetary policy and then legalizing and then implementing that the main purpose of monetary policy is to encourage or to discourage the aggregate demand of national currency encourage means when when the demand is created for the for national currency that's called encouraging uh, of the demand of the national currency discourage means when the demand for national currency is uh, is low or is made low by carrying out different operations by the central bank that's called discourage let's talk about how encourage uh, of the uh, of uh, of the demand for national currency is made when the central bank starts buying big the national currency from the market or starts injecting out the money supply uh, the money existing money from the market or stops money supply to the market so the demand for the national currency encourages you are aware of demand and supply theory when there is demand and there is no supply so what happens demand increases so through stopping the supply of national currency to the market or to through buying or collecting the national currency from the market what happens that demand increases so this increase in demand is called encourage the demand for national currency discourage means that when central bank supplies more money to the market and it exceeds the supply exceeds the demand so there is no demand and demand day by day decreases right and this is done by the central bank by doing the different operations which we'll talk about later on so through this when there is more supply and there is less demand so what happens that the rate of demand decreases so this is called the scourge of the demand for the national currency and aggregate here means overall demand throughout the country demand right so throughout the world there are three tools the traditional tools uh, used by the central bank is monetary policy tools the first one is reserve requirements the second one is discount rate the third one is money uh, open market operations now there has been a new tool introduced in 2008 which is called quantitative easing right quantitative easing so now there are in total four tools used by the monetary policy makers is a tool of monetary policy for proper management of the money supply or money or national currency or we can say discourage or encourage the aggregate demand of the monetary policy or we can say expansion and contraction of the monetary policy these four tools or operations are used by the central bank as a monetary policy tools right number one reserve requirements number two discount rate number three open market operations and number four quantitative easing now let's talk about the these four one by one i'll try to make it as simple uh, as possible so we just you guys just get the concept the main concept of these topics and then we we'll go ahead all right so let's first talk about the reserve requirements 
रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट इज बेसिकली वन ऑफ द टूल्स यूज बाई द सेंट्रल बैंक अगेंस्ट दल अदर कमर्शल बैंक वी ऑल नो दैट सेंट्रल बैंक इज द बैंक ऑफ द अदर बैंक इन अ कंट्री सो फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल बैंक साइड देर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट टू ऑल द अदर बैंक टू कीप एन एन a definite amount of money um in their wallets in order to fulfill the sudden withdrawals from uh, from their customers so what happens here every commercial bank in a country has an account with the central bank which is called bank wallet in that account or in that wa- wallet all banks are required to deposit a certain amount of money on daily basis and that money will be used that money will be kept in the central bank but will be used by those uh, by those commercial banks uh, in case of emergency withdrawals or huge withdrawals coming from the from their customers <coughs> or to save the banks from collapse at times of need so you may have seen that all banks after their uh, working hours for example after 1 o'clock in Afghanistan you may have seen bank cars moving money from their branches to the central bank so that is basically reserve requirement that all mon- all that money goes to central bank on daily basis so how this is used this tool is used by the central bank in order to Uh, expansion and contraction of the money supply in order to encourage or discourage the aggregate demand uh, aggregate demand to the uh, of the national currency when central bank wants to encourage so when the central bank increases reserve requirement what happens with the help of this is that more money on daily basis comes into the central bank means that all the banks they have to bring more money to the to the to their wallet in the central bank with the help of this all the money which is circul which is circulating inside in a market is injected out from the market is uh, basically taken out from the circulation and it, it is kept with the central bank so here the the uh, the the supply is less and by this demand is created for example if demand and supply are parallel and we take out the money from the circulation so demand is on its on its place but the supply has been stopped so supply is here so with the help of this demand is more than supply so by this demand is created aggregate demand is created right demand for the national currency currency is encouraged and this is called the contraction of the money uh, money supply money has been taken out from the circulation right okay when the reserve requirement rate is uh, made less what happens with the help of this is that all the banks commercial banks operating in a country they bring less money to the central bank so more money remains in the circulation within the market so with the help of this supply is increased right and demand is discouraged you see when once again i'll give you that example when demand and supply are parallel and we increase supply what will happen that demand is on the same place and supply is more so demand is discouraged right and that is called expansion of the money supply with the help of reserve requirements hope you understood uh let me show you uh, some other definitions uh, from the available sources reserve requirements it says reserve requirements are the amounts of funds that bank holds in reserve to ensure that it is able to meet liabilities in case of sudden withdrawals so where this money is hold this money is hold in the wallet or in the account in its account in the central bank 
Reserve requirements are tools used by the central bank to increase uh, or decrease money supply in the economy and influence the interest rates. So that's what I uh, earlier explained to you guys. Next we have discount rate. Discount rate here is uh, the rate of return or the income rate charged by the central bank uh, from the commercial banks operating in a country uh, on the loans or borrowings that they have from the central bank right so there is an agreement between the commercial banks and the central bank that in case at uh, times of need commercial banks will be provided with the money uh, with the borrowings by the central bank now the the central bank charges a profit uh, from that borrowing which is usually interest that is called discount rate so when discount rate increases what happens with the help of this that uh, the, the commercial banks they stop borrowing more money from the central bank because they, if they borrow they have to pay more profit on that uh, so the cost is more that's why uh, they stop uh, borrowing money so with the help of this money supply is stopped demand is discouraged and this is called contraction of the money supply sometimes with central and why do central bank uh, do this in order to discourage the aggregate demand of the money supply when they decrease the discount rate they do it for the purpose of uh, uh, expanding the money supply and to create uh, to encourage the uh, aggregate demand of the national currency so when uh, uh, central bank announces uh, a low discount rate all the commercial banks they start borrowing uh, from the central bank so with the help of this central bank injects in the money uh, in the in the circulation of the uh, market so with the help of this demand is created and but when when discount rates are high demand is discouraged so that's how uh, this tool is used by the central banks in order to encourage or discourage aggregate demand of the money supply or in order to expand or contract the money supply uh, to the market okay let's see uh, some uh, some other information on the discount rate okay discount rate um, uh, refers to interest or profit uh, rate charged to the commercial banks uh, and other financial institu institutions for the loans they take from the from the central bank through a discount window loan process so that's basically a rate charged by the central bank from commercial banks on their borrowings uh, from the central bank and that's how, how it happens I explained to you earlier when the discount rate is high the demand is discouraged when the discount rate is low the demand is created and encouraged next we have open market operations so open market operation is also one of the other tools used by the central bank in order to as a tool of monetary policy in order to uh, encourage discourage or in order to uh, expand or contract the money supply to the market or to uh, the aggregate demand of the national currency uh, open market operations uh, central bank directly the, the, the direct intervention of the central bank uh, in the market where the central bank purchases a foreign currency uh, against the uh, uh, national currency or sells the international currency against the local currency this uh, phenomenon is called open market operations and this happens a lot in Afghanistan you may have seen there is a very famous uh, exchange market called Sarah so most of the times when it happens that uh, on weekly or maybe on monthly basis uh, central bank sells international currency uh, in the public market uh, by this they inject out all the national currency uh, 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 from the uh, market uh, from the circulation in the market so international currency is in injected in and local currency is injected out with the help of this they want to create a demand uh, uh, for the national currency because they have stopped the supply 
and when supply is less, definitely demand will be more. Sometimes uh, uh, they buy back international currency on, on higher rates from the, from the local market in order to inject in the national currency. So what happens is that they, they buy back all the international currency, which is dollar, from the market, from, Af from the Afghanistan market, and against Afghani, they inject in Afghani. What happens by this is there's increased supply to the market. When there is more supply and less demand, when supply is more, so demand is less. So by this, they create demand sometimes and they discourage demand sometimes. And all these tools are used looking at the need. When there is a need for increasing the, uh, the price, uh, of the local currency right then uh, demand is created when they want to uh, 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 lower down the, uh, the, the, the price of the national currency and then they start supply so but with the help of this they uh, they uh, manage an equilibrium in the price of the local currency by using all these three different monetary policy tools Okay, let me uh, show you uh, some more information on uh, open market operations. Open market operations, OMO, refers to central bank buying or selling uh, short-term treasuries in open market in order to influence the monetary policy, thus influencing short-term interest rates. Uh, buying security adds um, uh, buying security adds money, money to the system making loans easier to obtain and interest rates decline. Selling securities from the central bank uh, balance sheet removes money from the system, making loans more expensive and increase rates. No, these open market operations are the methods used by the central banks. Okay, here the security uh, could be international currency, it could be other government uh, short-term uh, securities like treasury bonds and treasury bills and uh, could be uh, any other currency which has a value in the market which which are public i mean more used by the people uh, or, or by the uh, by the uh, individuals or entities in the market so by buying and selling back those uh, against national currency they create demand and they discourage demand now, uh, now let's talk about the other uh, monetary policy tool, the new one, which is called contradictive easing. And this is the introduction of new money into the money uh, money supply by central bank, also known as large-scale asset purchase. It's a monetary policy whereby a central bank buys predetermined amounts of government bonds or other financial assets in order to inject money directly into the economy. So here, quantitative easing is basically uh, the purchase of long-term assets by the central bank uh, uh, to the uh, from the market in order to inject in or inject out uh, the, uh, the local currency uh, to the market. And uh, why this tool is used? This is uh, the purpose of this tool is same as the other tools as well. So these are four different uh, tools used by the central banks as monetary policy tools in order to encourage or discourage the aggregate demand of the market or in order to or in order to expand or contract the supply of money to the market. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, types of monetary policy. Normally, there are two types of monetary policy. Uh, one is called uh, expansionary monetary policy, and the second one is called contractionary monetary policy or tight monetary policy. Expansionary monetary policy is also called loose monetary policy. In this monetary policy, uh, there is a reduction in interest rates, reduction in reserve requirements in buying in uh, of uh, bonds and financial instruments while in tight monetary policy 
interest rates or increase the re reserve requirement rates or increase increased in the uh, and central bank usually uh, sells uh, out the financial instruments and bonds in, in international currency so that's the difference between ex uh, expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy <coughs> now monetary policy is good uh, um, to in order to, to for the proper management of money supply in a, in, the, in, the, in a country but in normal situations when such situa situations are ruined abnormal in abnormal situation monetary policy is not reliable uh, for proper management of the money supply for example in in deflation situations or in bubble burst situations then monetary policy may not work uh, uh, as effective as uh, as it it should be so in deflations monetary policy is not reliable for for managing for managing or decreasing the deflations what is deflation 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 is basically uh, a decrease in in general price level of goods and services uh, or throughout the country so uh, deflation occurs when the national the inflation or uh, below zero percent inflation reduces the value of the currency over time but deflation increases uh, increases it so uh, mm, uh, definitely when the, uh, when there is general uh, uh, decrease in prices of of the goods and services we call that situation deflation now in such situations, monetary policy may not work. What then? There is another situation where monetary policy may not work, which is called bubble burst. Bubble is basically a fast r r raise in an asset's price. That asset could be a financial asset, could be international currency, or could be anything else. Followed by a contraction. Contraction means decrease in that price. That is called when it increases. This is called bubble. When it decreases. The, the prices decrease suddenly that's called burst and contraction when bubble bursts most of the people lose their jobs and economy collapse bubble burst happen when prices is not justified by the asset itself means that uh, the price of an asset it is more than its intrinsic or real value we call that bubble so it ha when when such situations happen it should come back to its original value so for sure when something has more value is given more value it has to come back to its original value so that it means it has to burst when it bursts most of the what happens that there is there are crises and most of the people loses their jobs it, it comes down to its original uh, um, value or maybe below it in the original value okay so uh, this is uh, how bubble bursts are in deflation now in these two situations monetary policy may not uh, work to control <coughs> now let's talk about the monetary policy of afghanistan so as i earlier discussed that the responsible for preparation and implementation of the monetary policy the responsible entity here in afghanistan is the central bank which is called the afghanistan bank uh, the main purpose of this is closely monitoring monetary developments, liquidity situations, interest rates, and credit markets. The main goal of the monetary policy of Afghanistan is control inflation at single digit, means single digit is from 1 to 9, right? Not more than 9. Avoid deflation. Do not leave inflation to become zero or below zero, and inflation inflation in to to maintain inflation between 2.5 percent to 4 percent, and to maintain the nominal exchange rate of Afghani, which is one dollar to 50 Afghans. Stable and to stabilize exchange rate to control inflation on imports products. So that's the main job of. Afghanistan monetary policy in the central bank. Uh, now let's talk about the core functions. The core functions of the Afghanistan 
Central Bank, the Afghanistan Bank, and the Monetary Policy Department. The Monetary Policy Department of, of the Afghanistan Bank is responsible to formulate and implement a sound, robust mon mon monetary policy. Robust monetary policy means <coughs> monetary policy which is effective and, 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 and <coughs> work to achieve the purpose. To carry out and produce state-of-the-art research and analysis. Like the monetary policy, before making the monetary policy, the cen central bank is responsible f to do a state-of-the-art research and analysis. Based on that information, the monetary policy should be produced. To compile economic statistics on real monetary, fiscal, and ex external sectors of the economy means to provide information uh, uh, to the public and that information should be solid and effective and efficient. The other function of the monetary policy department is corporate governance. They are required to manage all the other commercial banks, uh, uh, produce uh, banking law for them and other rules and regulations to properly govern the commercial banks in a country. So they are not misused uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, in money supply or in uh, taking out money from the country in unfair means. The research and analysis are, uh, are published in the quarterly and annual bulletins of the, the Central Bank of Afghanistan and this is the job of the Monetary Policy Department. The Monetary Policy Department also prepares reports for the Parliament, for the pre President's Office and to other key ministries and all of them are published. There are two types of publications, one is specific publication, one is general publication. General publications are uh, on quarterly and annual basis, which are published in bulletins, and those are available online and also uh, in the Afghanistan Bank. So everybody can go and uh, get those bulletins and, and read that information. But specific information it go, goes to certain offices like the Parliament, the President Office, and to other key ministries. And this information is not available to everybody. The one Bank encourages financial institutions to generate loans to commercial customers, small and medium enterprises, in construction companies, etc. In order to encourage the economic activity in the market, followed by the job creation in the market. So monetary policy also has a role in production of jobs in a country. Right? Okay, now let's talk about the monetary policy instruments. Market operation in, in Afghanistan, there are like uh, two monetary policy operations. Number one, open market operations and number two, foreign exchange auctions. With the help of these two operations monetary policy uh, is implemented in order to um, uh, reach to the objectives of the monetary policy so uh, how it happens the central bank sells the foreign currency foreign exchange which decreases the uh, currency in circulation definitely when When they sell out the international currency, what happens is they, the international currency is sold against Afghani. So Afghani comes into the central bank and a foreign currency in, uh, it goes out from the central bank. By this, the Afghani, the national currency which is in circulation, that's in circulation, the, the, the presence of the money, uh, national currency decreases. And this decreased reserve money as well, uh, where there is, creates a downward pressure on the prices. 
when monetary uh, when central bank purchases the the foreign currency, what happens is that Afghani or national currency goes into the circulation to the market. So the circulation of Afghani increases, which increases the reserve money as well, and there is an upward pressure on the prices. Right. So that's the prices of all the. Uh, goods and services okay there is another instrument used by the monetary policy department of the central bank which is called capital note auctions capital note auction is conducted on weekly basis to commercial banks means that the the, the, the central the, the local currency is sold out to the to the banks to manage liquidity in domestic and financial markets target reserve money of commercial banks to in uh, to invest their excess reserve with the central bank of Afghanistan so how this operation takes place capital notes or auctions to the central banks which decreases the, the, the bank's deposit right because they purchase that money when they purchase the cap uh, the capital notes so it decreases the bank deposits decreases reserve money and also there's a downward pressure on the prices and by this the inflation is controlled okay let's talk about instrument number two standing facility the central bank provides two standing facility to the comer commercial banks number one overnight deposit facility and overnight credit facility Depositing or borrowing happens on the demand of the commercial banks. Okay, overnight credit facility. When there is an overnight credit facility or overnight deposit facility, uh, it increases currency in circulation because central bank uh, uh, provides money, so it is entered into the circulation of the uh, of the of the market which increases the reserve money and there is an upward pressure on the prices of the goods and services now instrument 3 required reserve ratio the the Sun bank does not frequently change required reserve ratio it's currently 8% of the deposit means that on daily basis whatever deposit comes into a central bank out of the total of the deposits from the customers, 8% of the total should be deposited to the central bank. So 8% money on daily basis, 8% money in circulation comes to the central bank. This could be increased to 10% or 12% or could be reduced to 5% based on the need that the central bank feel. So, <coughs> When increase of the reserve uh, required rate, uh, required reserve is increased, there is de decreased, it decreases multiplier effect, it decreases the re uh, reserve money, and also there's a downward pressure on the prices. When the reserve, uh, required reserve ratio is increased, it basically increases the uh, multiplier effect and resulting in increase in reserve money and also there is a upward pressure on the prices of the overall uh, goods and services in the market so basically there are three different monetary poly policy instruments used by the central bank in Afghanistan the first one was capital notes auction and we'll discuss how it happens the second one was uh, standing facility which is overnight deposit facility and overnight credit facility and the third instrument used by the central bank as a monetary policy tool is reserve uh, uh, required reserve so basically uh, these are three different instruments used by the central bank of Afghanistan and that's all for today's lecture if you have inshallah any questions and any any comment any suggestion
we are more than happy to help you uh, please get back to me with all uh, with, with all your feedback and it could be suggestion recommendation even uh, criticism thank you so much for being with me god bless all of you and bye for now